from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Now tuned into the motherfucking greatest. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's one 800 800 talk one 800 Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio on an amazing, amazing Friday in Southern California. Hopefully it's great wherever you are. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show. Anything can happen during wide open telephones, but you have to make it happen. You have to dial this telephone number, 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Don't forget our international number. Because the 1-800 number doesn't work outside of the United States. So if you are outside the United States, call our international number. The line is open at this point. The country code is 1. The phone number begins with area code 323. And then 520-6211. I'll give that to you again. Country code 1. Area code 323-520-6211. Six two one one. Let's rock here, Fabi on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi Tom. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Wonderful. Really happy to be talking to you, Tom. I'm I'm so proud that you came back on Tuesday just to talk about the issue um, regarding Sarah, Sarah Payne. I think it's so absurd that. Uh, this group, this party, is against abortion. Is one of the reasons that U.S. is a first world country is because it has this law implemented to protect and you don't have unwanted children and more, you know, a massive group of poor people without education and this can go, you know, immensely. And I, I cannot believe these people that call to your show and they cannot just figure out that the economy was much better uh, eight years ago. That even people that work in a, you know, fast food chain was able to afford a house and have a better life and educate their kids. And now eight years from, you know, from that, we, we, the economy is in really bad shape and they cannot understand that this war should not happen was a complete, you know, not the real story, the, the reason that this war is start and how they cannot just see two things. The economy is not really well because it's a lot of money in a war that should not happen was spent. And why they come with this argument that Obama said that because he's going to raise taxes, they take one little thing and they make really big and they distort everything that he talks and they are, they are brainwashed. They are not, not really well educated, I think. I believe this, this, this group of people that support, um, the other candidate, I don't want to be, you know, politically incorrect and say names and everything, but uh, they probably are restaurant owners or a small business owner or I don't know, this, you know, real estate or something, this this middle class Republicans that they, uh, I said, that they have, you know, to protect their their earnings and I, I just don't understand, Tom, and thank you so much for trying to educate these people to make them to, to understand that the situation that we are living now is a result of eight years uh, that were not really well planned. Well, and the fact is the uh, people voted for it twice. So clearly America celebrates ignorance, uh, inarticulateness, and the fact that, uh, uh, you know, it does not matter how smart somebody is or how reasonable their arguments. Uh, America likes a dope. We have President Dope right now, and that that's what America likes. 
that is that is that makes me really sad and i hope you know when you're doing such a great work because you you make these people think tom you give argument and you come up with questions so at least you are i i believe that at least from 10 people that you talk that they they don't have this point of view i at least i think one you can you can help them to to view and you know diversify or, you know the reality that they're living because it's so brainwashed they sound like priests that I do, you know, do what I say, but don't do what I do. Uh, I, I just cannot understand that they can, they cannot change their minds and be open, open a little bit just to see the truth. I don't, I, I really, I really appreciate your help. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you to having me. And you are. Well, hang, hang on one second because Ryan wanted to say something to you and I, I will let him say it. Ryan, what did you want to say to Fabi? Hey, Fabi, um, you're talking about uneducation. I think you're the most uneducated bitch I've ever heard on the radio. Where are you coming from? Uneducated? I have a master's degree. I don't care what I, you got. Uh, and I doesn't master's. even matter. I don't even care. I speak three languages. How many languages do you speak? I speak one language, but I'm talking about politics in America. Okay, how many countries have you been? How many concerts have I been to? Countries, countries. Countries? I've been to Africa, I've been to Tanzania, I've been to Kenya. What did you I've do in Africa? You went there to Mexico. build, to, as a contractor, to build houses? Does that make you, or does you that went make to your church, to, to build houses to, to your church? I don't care. Is it what you went to Africa to do? Probably. I'm sure it, it's what you went to do. No, went I went to, to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, actually. Of, I went know, to go climb a mountain. Convert people to go to Africa to build a church to convert something. You don't even know what you're talking about. You are the religion that they are. I went there okay. to climb a damn mountain. Do you know Mount Kilimanjaro? Do you know what that is? It's a mountain in Africa. That's what I went there for. I there went to climb a mountain. This is why the your brain is so airy and you don't have nothing as much to say to me but offend me. No, you know what? You know what? In this country. There's a thing called politics, and because of abortion, that does not make you uneducated because someone believes in abortion. Are you, are you kidding me? Because she's against abortion. Are you, are you against abortion? I'm not against abortion. I believe it's a state's rights. I don't believe the federal government has any right to tell you or anybody what to do with a baby. Exactly. Do you want to have a baby? That's up to you and your state. I don't it's understand. Not up to the, it's not up to the... Tom, is this guy, he was listening to me? Was he listening to me? I, 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 to I don't know. Because I, I'm in favor of people making their own choices. I don't believe a party should decide. And then why do you believe that, that the went, federal government should have to tell people what, if they can or not have an abortion? Isn't that a state right or is that a federal government right? I, 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 I cannot hear you. But is is I can, abortion I a federal you. right or a state right? I think it's a person right. I don't think it should be in the Okay, then why is it a federal right right now? How can the federal government tell you you can have an abortion? Because the federal government does all kinds of things. Federal government tells you what your speed limit is or isn't, uh, whether or not you have to wear a seatbelt. Uh, I agree. The federal, yeah, sorry, the federal sorry, government, go, let's go down the list of things the federal government tells you what to do. Oh, they tell you to do a lot of things, and they don't have the right to tell you to do much. The federal government and, uh, tells you what abortion. you can the federal government tells you what you can put on a label of, of beer or wine. Oh, exactly. Tell you what you can drink and what you can eat and what you can smoke, and that's that's not right. Why? Well, the federal government has all kind. Of, why focus on abortion? The federal because government it's, it's uh, has. Talking about. Well, I understand that, but the federal government uh, has all kinds of control over all kinds of things. There's a federal income tax. Oh, exactly. That's totally wrong as well. But think... ever driven on an interstate highway? Who do you think built that? Oh, I'm driving on one right now, Tom. But, yeah. Well, who paid for that? Oh, I'm sure uh, part of my paycheck paid for it. Well, from the federal government. Oh, well, exactly. With my income tax, exactly. I mean, if the but state decided, if the state decided they wanted dirt roads instead of Interstate 10, uh, do you think they'd be allowed to do that? Oh, uh, probably, probably not. I, I doubt it, but you know what? It should be. I don't. I don't see why. Why it shouldn't be? That's how it is. Oh, is that how it is? But I don't. I don't. I don't think having a green or disagreeing with abortion makes you uneducated. The economy is not bad because of. I, I agree right with you. I agree with you. Of... I agree with you. Be liking abortion or not liking abortion doesn't make you educated or uneducated. It's having the government to have the right to tell you that you can't have an abortion, whether it's the state government, the county government, the city government, the government of your street, or the federal government. Nobody should be able to tell you you can't have an abortion. Oh, I, I agree 100% with that. Exactly. Yeah, but guess what? Uh, many states have been trying to tell people they can't have an abortion. 
Well, I think if a state wants to tell people they can't have an abortion, that's up to the voters. You just state. said moments ago that the state should not be able to say that. I say the people should, should, should not be allowed to say that. The Why should the people be involved in what you do with your own body? If I want to live in a state like Utah and they don't want to have abortions there, that's my choice. If I want to move to California, no. I have an abortion in California. No, you don't have a choice. If you live in a place that you cannot perform what you want, you don't have a choice. You don't, you don't have nothing to do with the subject. First of all, you are a man. You don't have nothing to talk about abortion. You should be quiet. Absolutely. And the only thing you should abortion. do is wear a condom. You don't even, you shouldn't even talk about it. It's not your business. You should not be against or okay, say it's not, it's not, my not business, your business. Then you, then you should, it's not your business to take my money if I do get you pregnant then. It's not my business to tell you to have an abortion or not. It's a man's right Keep to your money. Wait, so men don't have an opinion on abortion? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I don't. Really? I don't even. You. You are not really. Uh, you are not a really smart cookie, huh? Eh? Oh well. Yeah. You with your. You with your accent. Yeah. You've been to twenty five countries. You speak twenty languages. Whatever you do. No. 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 You're I not only that, speak you're not three. That smart. You're not I that speak smart. I'm three. I, I'm sure I'm smarter than you. I'm sure I am. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I'm you, sorry you, if you I hurt your smart, feelings, so, but I am. Oh, so it's so. Uh, who's who's in charge of Congress that have made the economy so bad right now? Is it the Republicans or the Republicans and the Democrats? So I think it's both. It's not just well, the party. Republicans you know, ran everything. I mean, the Republicans ran everything Republican until two anyway, years so ago. Offended, anyways. The Republicans ran everything until two years ago, as you know, right? Oh, I, I know that. In two years and ago, and how was the economy? How? Yeah, right. The economy. But the thing is, the economy was lousy, and it's Republicans who say uh, they believe in smaller government and less spending. And meanwhile, they're spending money like there's no tomorrow, and they did it for six years, and you know that's true. Oh, Republicans are full of crap. I agree with that. Right. Republicans I'm and Democrats. By the way, but... let me tell you something else. Republicans and Democrats are full of crap. They're all well, full exactly. of crap. I agree with that. They're exactly. all full of crap. Uh, I could do, because we, we don't get me wrong. Don't other. don't mix me up with these uh, these uh, uh, Democratic whiners. I'm not one of them either. I don't belong to either party. I think they're all a bunch of goddamn liars. And I'll tell you something else. They're not only a bunch of goddamn liars. Uh, these are people who they 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 love to say they're going to cut the size of government. They're going to shrink. They're going to this. They're going to make more efficient. And 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 the economy has is is in the toilet. And the dollar is at record lows recently until it. And a small bounce the last week or two and 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 let me let let's just say that all the people who say they believe in small government they were in charge for six of the eight years and the president is one of those guys well the, we, we know how we know how uh flip flop the president is i mean he's he said he was not gonna police the world and look what he's been doing so no, there you go. Uh, kids, I, I gotta run because we're out of time for this segment, but a good spirited conversation for God's sake. Tom. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom. one 800 5800 You said women are dream killers, dude. That is the exact definition. I was about to go back to school. I stopped. I picked up two jobs. I let her sit her fat pregnant ass at home. And I did nothing but support her, and I was an enabler, Tom. And now I caught her having an affair on me, and I kicked her to the curb. The Tom Likas Show. Yeah! Ah! Tom Likas Show. Wide open telephones on this Friday. The phones are smoking. Smoking! 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Lisa on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Hey, I think I have an idea on how you feel about guys having vasectomies and not telling females. But I'm wondering, what are your thoughts on if the whole situation was reversed and it was the woman who maybe had her tooth tied or had a hysterectomy and got involved with the guy and never told him when she knew that he wanted children? How do you feel about that? Do you have the right to do it? Um... In that case, uh, here's the thing, though. I, I, I recommend to guys that they keep this a secret when they're out getting laid. I don't think it's a good idea to keep that a secret if you're going to marry somebody. Okay. What if you're just casually dating? Casually dating, uh, there's no benefit to you to not reveal it or to reveal it. It doesn't really matter. Okay. Uh, because the, a, a man can't become pregnant. Right. You see, the reason I tell guys to keep it a secret is because there's plenty of women who hop into the sack with a man, but what they really want is to conceive a child. 
Okay. If you tell, if you don't tell a guy that that you're fixed, it's not going to make any difference to him. You, he'll want to have sex with you if you're fixed or if you're not fixed. That's true. If a woman it meets a guy and uh, the guy, uh, she, if, let's say she wants to get knocked up, <laughs> um, if she doesn't know that the guy is fixed, she'll have sex with him, thinking she's going to get what she wants. Okay, but so so guys, deceiving someone uh, for, for a man to deceive someone he's casually dating has a benefit. Uh, I don't know what the benefit would be to you. Okay, I was just wondering because I listened to you a lot, and I was just wondering that's been on my mind. I wanted to know if how you felt about it if the roles were reversed. Yeah, I, I'm thinking this over. There's one. There's only one way it might make sense for somebody to hide that, and that is if you wanted to force a guy to use condoms. Okay. Okay. So, so let's say you want to. Let's say you were tired of telling guys, "Do you have a condom? Where's your condom? You're not putting on a condom." If you were tired of doing that, one thing you could just say to guys is, "You know, <laughs> I don't use any birth control at all." <laughs> and then, <laughs> then they might be more likely to wear a condom, don't you think? Yes, I think I, so. I, yeah. So that might be the one potential benefit. Because if you told guys that you're fixed, they might say, well, then I don't need a condom. Right? And uh, she disappeared. Another disappearance on the radio. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Lucy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Professor. Hello, oh, my Lucy. goodness gracious. You know what? I've been trying. <laughs> I oh my god! I have been trying to get a hold of you in for the past couple no, like three, almost a month ago. And wow! I keep waiting, and I keep waiting, and you know what? I'll wait forever. You know, I, you should become my therapist. We should have a session once a week for an hour. <laughs> really? I'll give you. You, a, you know what? I'll give you a session once a week for an hour. Hey. <laughs> There's so much advice you can give me. I'm calling because, you know, I have so many, you know, people talk so much about me because I agree with everything you say. And, I mean, main reason I was calling was because there's this guy that, you know, has been banging me for a while. And the first night I met him, I, of course I let him, you know, hit it because I'm not going to hold it back from nobody. I mean, not like, you know, being a whore-wise, but. Really? And what's your number no. again? <laughs> oh, you have it on the screen there, so uh, oh, I don't. I, well, uh, Dean has it, but uh, I just wanted to check, make sure I have the right number. Right now, you know, of course, if I like you, I'm gonna, you know, give it up, no doubt about it, because I don't want my time wasted, nor your time wasted. Now, you know, I don't like jumping randomly from guy to guy. If I find a guy, you know, I'm gonna stick with him, and after probably three or four times, I'll let him go and find someone else. Well, this guy, you know, after the third time, he he asked me, we should start dating. And I don't know how to let, like, because I don't like being mean to people, because in case I get horny and I have no one there, I can just call them back up. So I don't know how to say it in a nice way that I just don't want, I don't want nothing because it's just a big turnoff when people come at me with relationships after, you know, being in the sack for a while. I just, just a really big turnoff. It's just like, no, why do you want a relationship? It's, no, let's just have fun. Yeah, I just, I'm not in the mood for that. I don't want to settle down. I never saw myself, you know, getting married. I think it's just pointless to get married because no one knows what the real meaning of love is anymore. And it's like, well, I love you and I love you. And it's so easy for people to fall in love, but they don't realize it's all pure lust. Like, trust me, I have gone after guys once they said, I don't want to deal with you because I was sprung on, you know, them banging me because it was really good. But, you know, now it's just like no one gets it, what the real feeling is, because it's just so, you know, outdated. And I just, I need advice to learn how to just let it, like, tell him that um, it's over. You know. Now, let me ask woman. you a question. Don't you have a bullpen? A what? A bullpen. What do you mean by that? I talk to the guys about having a bullpen all the time. The bullpen is, you ever, you ever watch a baseball game? Yes, here and there when I have time to watch TV. That's where the pitchers warm up, like 
when you're right, about to bring right, another pitcher right. into the game. Oh, okay. And I suggest that everybody have a bullpen. So uh -huh. that when you need to take the pitcher out of the game, you got somebody waiting in the bullpen ready to come in. Oh, you know what? That military guy that you were talking to earlier, give him my number. Call him <laughs> up and give him my number because I'll let him relieve all that sexual buildup that he had in Iraq with that old hag banging other people. I'll give it to him and, you know, he can let it all out and he doesn't have to have any relationship with me. I'll give him some good, excellent Thank you for being a military, serving in the military. <laughs> off, you know what I mean? <laughs> Look at that. You're ready to go. I, I mean, I'm, I just don't like my time being wasted. Let me I tell you have... what I tell the guys, okay? Because it's usually the guys who call in with those questions. I tell the guys, the minute they, they start asking for more, you just say it's been very nice knowing you. Because once they start going up that street, there's, you know, it's like once you've taken the genie out of the bottle, there's no putting it back in. Right, right, okay. Yeah, no, I mean, a lot of people look at me like my sisters, mainly my sisters, are, you know, they're always, you know, hustling their, their boyfriends, don't drink, don't do this, don't do that. And now, I don't approve much of, you know, getting drunk to the point where you pass out. You know, alcohol, beverages are here, you know, fine here and there, but, you know, they're just, like, so... Why? I don't understand why girlfriends are like that. Why they tie down the man? Like, they're like, well, I just want him to spend more time with me. And, you know, I want all his time. But yet you won't let him go relieve his own stress with his friends. And it's just, my sisters, oh, we don't get along because they're just like, well, you know what? They're, they all have kids. They were all pregnant by the age 17. And, I, I mean, you know, I'm in my early 20s. I'm going to school. I'm working. You know, I live... I don't live with my, my parents. You know, I live in a different state from where my parents live. And they're just, you know, mad at me because I don't have kids and I don't want to, you know, settle down and I don't want to be like this. And my mom, now my mom, she told me, quit it and pretend you never did it. And that's how it's going to be. <laughs> that's how I go by it. And this is my mother, right? My mother, I don't know what happened. I love my mom to death because she, she, she ended up getting pregnant. And my dad wanted to marry her, but she didn't want to marry my dad. She was forced into the marriage by my grandparents, which, you know, of course, they've been married over, you know, 30 years now. So, of course, you know, they eventually came together and, you know, whatever. And she always told me, you know what? It was never called cheating until you're married. You know, so. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> well, your mom's out of control. <laughs> You know, so that's why I, I, my sister thinks that my mom's very, you know, quiet and very, okay, you know, you know, she takes care of my dad. But, you know, my mom knows my lifestyle because I'm so open with my family, like my parents, actually. And I let them know, like, you know, they ask me, why don't you bring a boyfriend around? Well, why am I going to bring a boyfriend over? It's not like I'm going to marry him. I mean, this is pointless to be bringing random guys to the house and then knowing where I live. There's no point yeah. for that. Uh, these know? guys aren't even boyfriends. No, not even close. To boyfriends, not even they're, boyfriends. They're friends, friends, and they happen to be boys. No, the guys that are going to bang me that one night, and that's it. That's right. Gonna... <laughs> so I just wanted that advice. Um, I listen to you. I appreciate everything. And you know what? A lot of girls might hate you, but I definitely love you, and you have my number. So feel free to call. Sounds good to me. All right, then. Thank you. All right, darling. Thank you so much for the call. There goes Lucy. She's ready to rock. What eight hundred five eight hundred Tom? That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Jeremy on the Tom Like Your Show. Hello, Jeremy. Hi, Tom. How you doing? I'm doing okay. Um, I was just looking for some career advice from you. Um, I'm looking to make. What I want to do is make a six figure income, and uh, my interests are like sales. And I have some experience with uh, computer, you know, network administrator, and uh, maybe voiceovers. Um, you know, so I, I don't know. Uh, right now, I just drive a taxi cab, you know, in the San Fernando Valley. But uh, I need to make a six-figure income, and I was wondering what direction you think I should I should move towards, or or maybe even going back to school. I'm 29. I don't know if it's too late to go back. You know. Well, I mean, if you wanted to study to do voiceovers. Uh... I don't know that going to a college would help you with that, but there right. are in Los Angeles. If you've got the time to take the classes and the money to spend, uh, there are people who teach voiceover work, people who actually do voiceovers, and they have voiceover uh, seminars. Uh -huh. And if, yeah, you can check in places like the LA Weekly, 
other local publications, and uh, uh, you know there are people you can talk to them and see what their credentials are and learn how to do it. Uh, doing voiceovers is different from doing radio or TV. Uh, because as one of the great voiceover guys of all time, Don LaFontaine, who just died in the past week, and I had the pleasure of meeting him, and he uh, was really just a pioneer, the guy who did uh, the voices of what's got to be half of all the movie trailers of my lifetime. Uh, he, he said that uh, doing, uh, uh, doing voiceover work is acting. It's being an actor. And so it requires a different skill than coming in here and pounding out the phone number and taking phone calls, for example. And uh, the people who uh, who are good at voiceovers and get a lot of work are people who've taken acting classes, voiceover classes. And they've gotten their training. Making six figures is something that happens after many years of working. It's a very competitive business. And some people never make six figures. You know that. Right. So you've got to be great. I would never discourage you from pursuing a dream. But being great takes a lot of time and a lot of work. Are you right. ready to, to do that? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm willing to do that. It's just, it's just it's all about the money, too, you know, to get the money to get, you know, voiceover tapes recorded and sending them into studios. I don't. I don't want to waste my money. You know, if if, uh, if it's too much competition, and uh, well, I might there's a not... lot of competition. You're in Los Angeles. I mean, my God, this is people come to Los Angeles from all over the world. Yeah. To get into this business, as a fellow now, uh, his name is Ben Patrick Johnson. He was the original voice on our show back in 1994. And Ben uh, it came to Los Angeles from Minneapolis. By the way, Ben now is the voice of probably the other half of the movie trailers that you hear. And uh, he does promos for TV networks. And you've heard his voice a million times. But uh, he came here from Minneapolis to pursue that career. And he's been here for like 20 years. And... I know that when we knew him, he hadn't accomplished nearly what he has accomplished today. So if you think you're going to start doing voiceovers and next year you're going to make $100,000, that's not going to happen. Yeah, no, I know that. Well, I never even thought about voiceovers. It's just that a lot of people, they just they kept like pushing me. Oh, you got such a great voice. You, you, need, a, well, you need to do something with that or... You know, well, make... uh, yeah, but the thing is, the, the way to find out is to go to uh, one of these classes... And to uh, try to get evaluated by the people teaching the classes. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do then. All right, and see if you actually have any potential or not. Remembering that, the thing is, if it's very competitive, you've got to be the best. By the way, my business is very competitive. So I knew I was going to have to offer something nobody else did. I was going to have to, being good was not good enough. I had to become great at it. And I want to tell you, when I started doing it, I was terrible at it. And I made no money. Yeah, that's the scary part, you know, not making any money, but... Yeah, well, okay. that's, that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, these jobs don't grow on trees. The people who get them, get them because they've survived the competition among the best of the best. And that means I'm not, that doesn't mean don't try. That means plan on becoming the best of the best. If you don't have the ambition to become the best of the best, keep your day job. Uh, well, I think I have the ambition. I, I really do. Because I used to do sales, you know, and that's, you know, that's something else I'm interested in too. I don't know if I should just, you know, go towards sales and try to get a real estate license and, and uh, you know, get in, into selling houses or... Well, you picked uh, the wrong time for that. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed there's been a little dip in home buying. Yeah, I know. But some people keep making money doing short sales or the houses are starting to go down, the prices too, so people are going to start buying again, right? Well, that's what we all hope. Those of us who own real estate, we do. Anyway, Jeremy, there's a lot to think about. And uh, if you're 29, uh, certainly it's like last days are before told. This is the time to be giving it serious thought. So uh, if you think you can be great at something and you want to be the best, 
I encourage you. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. You know, at this point, you need to, you need to put out your own jewelry. It says, uh, what would Tom Likas do on the bracelet? Yeah. <laughs> and, then a, and then a DTB on the other side. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Here we are. Wide open telephones on this Friday. 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. And uh, by the way, we have not had an international call in the last couple of weeks. We haven't had one that's made it on the air. We get a lot of email, a lot of uh, a lot of phone calls that don't make it on. But uh, if you're in another country and you want to get in, uh, we have an international number just for you because the regular number doesn't work outside the United States, but this number will. The country code is 1, the area code is 323, and the phone number is 520-6211. That's 1-323-520-6211. I don't care what country you're in, we will put you on the air. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Joe on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much, Joe. Hey, I had a quick question for you, man. Yes, sir. I was wondering if you would ever uh, consider running as a presidential candidate for the good old U.S. of A. It doesn't pay enough, uh, Joe. Uh, it pays a lot less than what I make doing this job. <laughs> well, uh, I did want to let you know, man. Um, yeah, you, I, I really, uh, I really agree with everything you're saying about our, uh, I guess, our, the state of our country right now. And I, and honestly, I feel like we need someone like you to come in office and uh, fix a lot of the problems. Well, uh, you know, as you know, also I've got plenty of dirt. But now that Sarah Palin has broken that barrier, oh, uh, you know, maybe even I'd have a chance. Isn't she a Pentecostal? I don't know what her religious background is. Yeah, I thought I saw something online with her on uh, the news with her preaching at a Pentecostal church. And I've been to Pentecostal churches, and I'll be honest with you, um, I would never, ever vote for someone like that. <laughs> you kind of have to question John McCain, too. He was a prisoner of war. You know, God bless him. He, he, you know, he fought for our country. But do you think there's any, do you think there could be any possible lasting uh, post traumatic stress? effects or anything like that that could affect his uh, duties in office? I don't know, but uh, believe me, uh, that argument is not going to sway people who like John McCain. Yeah, geez. I'm not expecting it to. I mean, the current president's a complete dope. That didn't stop people from voting for him. Yeah. Oh, man. That's just a, that's a complete mess. I don't know if I'll ever understand. Uh, but, we uh, love ignorance in this country. Oh, you're telling me, man. I, That's I, why we love reality shows. That's why people love listening to the average caller on this show. You need a reality show, man. <laughs> Don't think they haven't been offered. <laughs> Just call the reality show. Tom Like is DTB. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Dude, you're the best. You take me out Halle, Ber Halle Berry style. Halle Berry style. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom Steve is calling from beautiful Portland, Oregon. Hello. What's up, Tom? How much, Steve? How are you? Uh, first, you asked me what's up. I said not much. Now you ask how I am. This is time filling. Yeah, yeah. Your time is more important than my time. Yes, actually, it is, and the reason is because I'm speaking to four and a half million people. And uh, the company that uh, owns this station and the network on uh, which we are broadcast, these are public companies with shareholders, and they expect a return for their investment. And wasting their airtime uh, listening to you find 16 different ways to say hello, how are you, uh, is not a wise way of deploying company assets. From your end. But why do I care? Well, you dialed in. I mean, if you didn't care, you wouldn't have called in. Well, I called in to say that 
you know, I'm just, I get, you know, I've, I've listened to you for a long time, and I, re- I went to your uh, party in Portland there, talking about all the hot chicks you were going to have there and stuff, and it was just a freaking sausage fest. Well, I guess what, Steve? Uh, first of all, most of these parties, because 60 to 70% of our audience is male. I got to consist of males. That didn't mean there weren't hot chicks for me, for Gary, and for several of the listeners who called in and reported getting laid. Now, just because you didn't get laid doesn't mean others didn't. But besides all of that, uh, here you are. You're calling up to jump ugly on me or get negative or make a crank call or whatever you're doing. And the fact is, you just admitted you've been listening for a long time. Years, in fact. Yes. So if you've been listening for years and you don't like the show, or you don't like me, I never or you, said that. well, whatever it is, you have some issue with me. Uh, the, all I care about is that you're listening. I couldn't care less what you think of the show as long as you continue to listen to it. All right. Your point is made. You bet it is. You win as usual. Of course. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> Another guy tried to jerk my chain. Okay. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number, the Tom Likas Show with wide open telephones. Let's say hello here to Dan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Tom? Okay. Uh, I'm 22 years old. Um, I should have started junior college right after I got out of high school. I know that. But, you know, I, I didn't, and I just partied all until maybe a couple months ago, and I woke up and realized that um, I can't do that anymore. So I, you know, I've, I've always been really fascinated with the radio and stuff, and I hear, hear how you talk, how you how you say that uh, the radio is very competitive and whatnot. And I'm 22, and I'm not saying I want to have, like, a show or be a host, but I would love to, like, work in, like, the radio field, whether it be, you know, answering phone, what, what an inter- anything pretty much. And I just want to know, what do you think, uh, me starting off right now, how we you know, like, I'm 100% dedicated, I'm going to school, like, all week, and I got a, I got a, a little crappy job right now, but it's, it's getting me by. But I just wanted to, you know, uh, maybe hear what recommendation, like, I don't know, any type of advice or anything. Advice? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, is it, um, am, am I too late to be, I mean, I'm only 22, but is, I should have been doing this when I was 18, or if I just, or am I okay? <laughs> well, it's not too late, but I don't think you realize how little this business pays people who are not on the air. Yeah, see, I don't know stuff like that either. And I'm, I'm going to find out, obviously, but, uh, but you know, it, you have to start somewhere, though, so that's why, I mean, maybe one day... Yeah, I but the question is, what, do you, what would you ultimately want to do? You know what, I love, I love sports. Uh, I would love to get into maybe like a... Just being a, a, maybe more of a, a journalist, I guess, or, or you know, like a, I, I don't want to say different stations because I don't know, but uh, giving maybe yeah, maybe like a host and a sports talk show host or something like that. Right. Well, uh, the, being a journalist and being a radio talk show host are two different professions. <laughs> yes, yes. So, which one would you want to do? Um, a talk show for sports, though. Um, that's yeah, because that's why I pretty much. That's what I like to listen to. By the way, the people, who, the people who work in those jobs, at least in Los Angeles, uh-huh. make very little money. Really? They are very low paid. Those so guys not- you listen to that you think are interesting, they, they <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, among talk radio people, they make the least. Really? Because they have the lowest audiences. Yeah, yeah, I, I can understand that. But I, I, I don't know. So, so pretty much I should... Just figure out something else to go to school for that that really attracts. Well, I'm just saying. Stuff. I mean, if you, if you're willing, if you're willing to make the the low pay that those guys make. Mm-hmm. Also, by the way, there's a high mortality rate. I don't know how much you listen to sports radio. Uh, according to the ratings, nobody listens all that much. Yeah, I've heard that before. But, but yeah, but uh, have you noticed how often people get fired? No, I don't. Know, I don't know that aspect of it. You know, well, you know, I mean, I but, about... you know but I mean, the, I'm talking about the people you listen to on the radio. Yeah. See, no, I, I don't. I. I... I, I, mean, I listen to probably one AM station, and and you know, I've, and I've been listening for a good like maybe year now, and so it's the same people. So I, I really don't know. What, about sta- what station has the same people as a year ago? Uh, AM five seventy. They yeah, have the same the people as a year stuff. ago. I, you know what? Uh, Victor Brick has always been on there. Steve Hartman has. Uh, um, you know, people like that. Those, those are people. Isaac Lowenkoff and 
Those are the people I listen to. That's what. That's that's why I want to do radios because of stuff like that. I, I mean, yeah. you probably think it's funny, but uh, you know, that, I mean, are you aware how low the ratings are there? Yeah, I, I, I do know how low the ratings are. I've, I've I've even heard them talk about how low the ratings are for sports talk radio. But so, but the know, thing you know, is, when the ratings when the ratings are that low, the yeah. pay is also low. Do you know why? No, I don't know why. Because when the ratings are low, the radio station can't charge the same price for advertising. Yeah. It's that simple. All right, so pretty much if I wanted to do this, I'd have to be the best at it and come up with a different angle and get paid a lot of money for it. Because if I just try to go in as, you know, just doing anything, I'm not gonna. I'm just going to be uh, living uh, very low. Right. Okay. Well, thank you, Tom. Thank you. you. Know the I certainly can. Can we all just get a bong? One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. It's Mark on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Mark. Tom, you know, your life has been an open book for us for the benefit of the listeners, and I can't help but think you were talking about one of your ex-wives a while back and how everything was going fine until she brought up the fact that, well, she actually did want kids. And my question to you is, do you think it's in a woman's nature? You know, let's say you just said yes to kids for some crazy reason. Do you think it's in a, in a woman's nature to come up with something to kind of sabotage things? To well, I think that's to... possible, but I don't think that was the case here. Because years later, she called me and apologized, said it was the worst mistake of her life. The Tom Likas Show.